And let's expand this developing story. Global affairs analyst Colin Zwinke joins me now on the news from Belgium via Skype. Good to have you join us, Colin Zwinke. Thank you. Thank you, Precious, for having me. So how significant is this airstrike uh, conducted by the U.S., especially as the um, negotiations over the JCPOA, which is the Iran nuclear deal, you know, is still ongoing? Um, it's pretty um, significant uh, because uh, one would uh, expect that um, uh, on both sides, uh, nothing has to be done at this uh, precarious, uh, precarious uh, time to actually upset, um, you know, uh, emotions uh, in terms of um, the ongoing uh, negotiations. But um, essentially, this is something that the United States under President uh, Joe Biden uh, thought that uh, it needed to do at this uh, at this point in time. Uh, don't forget that um, you know there had been a similar um, uh, attack, similar retaliatory attack, um, sometime uh, earlier this year. And um, you know the whole the feeling is that um, they see a trend that is actually escalating, and the U.S. feels that uh, at this point in time they needed to act in order to send a very clear and uh, unambiguous uh, message that uh, this cannot be and that they needed to uh, deter them as well as uh, actually incapacitating some of the um, you know weapons that uh, that are being used to launch the uh, rocket attack but also uh, the drone uh, attack um so uh, essentially they thought uh, this was something that needed to be done at this time and the risk probably have been weighed such, such that uh, it doesn't uh, actually hamper the ongoing uh, negotiations. So, but how does this change the dynamics of, of that negotiation? Because uh, when you look at the stance of, of the new president of, of Iran, he seems to be tough. And now that this has happened, how does this change the dynamics of the conversation or negotiation? There are two ways to uh, to look at it. Uh, even though uh, the new uh, newly elected uh, president of uh, Iran has uh, talked tough and has uh, always been known to talk uh, tough, uh, you know, being a, a hardliner, uh, in his um, inaugural uh, press conference, uh, he was known indeed to have, um, you know, supported uh, the uh, ongoing negotiations, actually saying that. Uh, he wouldn't uh, act in any way that will uh, derail it. Now, he also made very clear uh, where the United States uh, need to start, uh, need to stop, you know, in terms of uh, no-go areas in the uh, negotiation. So if we take him by his words, it means that uh, he has uh, seen some uh, strong national interest for Iran uh, for the negotiation to uh, carry on and for the deal to be uh, reinstated, albeit uh, renegotiated. So he might not. Uh, it doesn't look as if he will do something to uh, upset uh, the course of actions uh, already ongoing. Now, on the part of the United States, um, I, I do not think uh, they want a situation where their consciences would have to be mortgaged, such that when they see a need to uh, act, uh, that they do not uh, act. Don't forget that they found this to be necessary in order to deter Iraq uh, in, the, in the area that uh, they are going, as well as send a strong message to the strong man uh, in, uh, in Syria. So I think uh, both, <laughs> both options, both sides have been weighed uh, carefully, and it doesn't look like it is going to um, you know, upset the ongoing uh, negotiations around the nuclear arsenals. Mm -hmm. So let, let's look at the fact that this happened in Iraq and Syria. Um, Iraq uh, has responded through its Prime Minister, Mustafa al kadhimi He, con he con uh, condemned the airstrikes by the U.S., calling it a violation of his sovereignty. Uh, we also saw what happened last year with uh, Qasem Soleimani, who was killed in Baghdad, um, Baghdad International Airport in Iraq. So it, it does look like because of this, there is rising tension in terms of relations between U.S. and Iraq. And then it's giving Iran um, this growing um, influence over Iraqi's internal affairs? Yes, indeed, uh, it does. And uh, I think uh, that is more of, um, you know, the main uh, worries. Traditionally, you will expect, um, 
you know, threats of uh, retaliation. Eh? That has been uh, that has been very clearly uh, issued. Whether they would uh, follow through with uh, with, uh, with the threat of uh, retaliation remains uh, to be seen. But uh, so far, nothing has indicated that uh, the situation is going to be um, worsened. Uh, rather, um, it looks like um, you know they will accept the situation as it is, and if they are going to retaliate, I do not think it's going to be something uh, that the retaliation is going to be something uh, far-reaching. But yes, like you said. Uh, the leverage uh, that Iran holds now on the whole um, on the whole uh, arena is uh, set to uh, actually be uh, strengthened in terms of uh, you know having more control, more power over you know the regional geopolitics uh, you know in that uh, in that part of the world. All right, so um, we saw how the um, Iraqi parliament also responded after the killing of Qasem Soleimani last year when it asked U.S. to withdraw foreign, foreign countries to withdraw their troops from Iraq. Um, we're also seeing now that U.S. is going to withdraw its troops from Afghanistan in, in, um, in September. And now these attacks on U.S. military uh, um, facilities in that region what does this mean for the presence of U.S. military uh, uh, forces in that region? It doesn't look likely that um, uh, the reaction of the United States will be to, um, you know, uh, reduce or even remove the uh, approximately 2,500 uh, forces that are positioned there. Uh, and I think uh, to a very large extent, uh, the reason that they have acted in the way that they have acted, I mean, the United States, is actually because uh, they see the presence of, uh, of their troops as necessary and one that is going to remain there for quite uh, some time uh, in terms of helping to, uh, you know, rebuild, consolidate, uh, you know, the local security uh, forces uh, in, the, in the country. So I think it is essentially for that reason that uh, they have uh, acted. Do not forget that uh, there is, it's, it's also an expanded uh, global uh, coalition uh, forces, uh, out of which uh, United States represent about 2,500. So, no, I do not uh, have any reason to believe that, um, you know, uh, troop withdrawal will be the consequence of uh, the action that has been taken or the uh, threats that uh, you know, U.S. troops has uh, has placed. Rather, the U.S. will do everything to protect their troops even more. All right, we'll see how this continues to play out, especially as it has to do with um, relations between the U.S. And, and the Middle East. Thank you for talking to us, Global Affairs Analyst Colin Suweke. Always a pleasure. Thank you for having me.